to on this issue. The city's ability to govern what people do with their property, the city's ability to pass plans that say, hey, we want housing here and we want commercial there and we want parks here, that power to regulate land, to tell people what they can and cannot do with their property, that's a power that's handed down to the city by the state. And the state says, if you want that power, you do this plan and your plan needs to meet certain criteria. And we, the state of California, not me, the state of California, they will decide whether our plan meets those criteria or not. So what happens if we just say, you know what, we don't want to play ball. We're just not interested. We've got enough housing. We've got tra traffic problems. We've got a lot of reasons why we shouldn't have to do housing here in Alameda. Well, here's what happens if we take that position and why we, we city staff, are not going to recommend that we do that as a city. Number one, as soon as we miss the deadline, which is basically at the end of this year, to adopt the new plan, you are no longer in compliance with state law, which means a couple things. One, you immediately are no longer eligible for a whole slew of state funding sources that you depend on for your parks, for your transportation, and for affordable housing. The city every year depends on that flow of money coming from the state down to this down to the cities and what the state has said, look, if you're not going to play ball, then why do you expect to get funding from the state? Like right off the bat, that gets cut off. Number two, you no longer have a, uh, an adequate general plan. So you no longer have the ability to regulate land use. So what, has ha what happens in these situations is the state says, okay, you no longer have a valid general plan. You no longer have the ability to regulate land use. So you don't have the power to tell people anymore what to do and what not to do. And the state has determined, and it's all written in the state law, like, and we have a housing crisis here in California. So if anybody in this city wants to build housing, and if 20% of those units are, are, are affordable units, just come on down to the state and we'll approve it. And it doesn't matter whether it's a compliant with the city zoning code or not, or its general plan, because the city doesn't have a valid general plan and zoning code. So we're going to approve those housing projects. The next thing that happens is we're going to get sued. Um, that's what happens when you are out of compliance. Um, and the costs to defend those lawsuits are in the multi-million dollars. The state law established, because they're serious about this, the fines that cities must pay on a monthly basis, they escalate up to $600,000 a month for cities that continue to dig in their heels and not play ball. Um, and um, of course, the way the state law is written is if somebody sues the city for not doing their job and the city loses, which of course, at the end of the day, you're gonna lose because the state determines whether you're in compliance or not, you're also paying their attorney's fees. So it is a no-win situation. And it's, a, from staff's perspective, and what happens at the end of those lawsuits? The judge tells you, hey, adopt the plan. So you either do it the easy way or you do it the hard way. We recommend we do it the easy way. Um, the, one of the biggest issues that we struggle with here in Alameda is something called Measure A. Measure A is a charter amendment. So you have a city charter. It's the original document that sort of governs how things work in Alameda. It's mostly about, hey, you're gonna have a mayor, you're gonna have a council, you're gonna have a city manager. Um, it sort of just lays out the basic structure of government in Alameda, which is all great, but it has an unusual provision. And that's a land use provision, which is not typical in a charter. It was put there in 1973 by the voters of Alameda. And they decided to add a sentence in your charter in 1973. It says, there shall be no multifamily housing built anywhere in Alameda ever again. The state of California has had issues with this for many years. It's the state law says you must allow at least some multifamily housing. And, and the question becomes, I mean, for those of you who are kind of wondering, like, what's the big deal? I mean, multifamily housing is the how, type of housing that is affordable compared to single family housing. So 
why is it a problem to just say we want no multifamily housing? Because what you're really saying is, if you can't afford single family housing, don't come to Alameda. Go somewhere else. That's the implication of that, of that provision. Um, up until recently, over the last 10 or 12 years, we have been getting our housing elements certified and we've been doing it by, by showing the state, yes, we have this prohibition, but we can tweak it a little bit in certain places so that we can provide enough housing to meet our regional housing need. That's the number of units that we have to show the state we can build in Alameda under our current zoning. So up until recently in California, that's really all you had to do with a housing element. Show that your zoning allowed housing in, in, in enough places where you provided enough units. This round, things are a little different. And it's different not just for Alameda, it's for all cities in California. That There is also now a requirement that you affirmatively further fair housing. And what, that, what the state is saying is, it's time to start looking back at what has happened in your city over the last 10, 20, 30, 40 years and, and look at, at, at what sort of actions have you taken as a city over that time that has contributed to unfair housing policies, which then leads to um, sort of uh, differences in opportunity in different areas of your town, or to put it in, in sort of simpler terms, if you've got poor areas of town and rich areas of town, which is very common in most cities, you can't be just putting all your new housing and all your new affordable housing in the poor areas and say, oh, our rich areas don't have to have any more housing because they don't want it. You have to spread it around. And if you've got a history of sort of discriminating against certain types of, of people or certain income levels, you gotta stop doing that and you gotta address it. Affirmatively further fair housing. So this debate has been going on for years in Alameda. Like, let's just, we wanna keep Measure A. I mean, up until just two years ago, the voters of Alameda said, absolutely, we wanna keep Measure A. That was Measure Z, which went down. Um, uh, the voters in Alameda was like, nope, we wanna keep Measure A. The state of California is written us a letter saying it is fundamentally contrary to fair housing to prohibit multifamily housing in your city. So we have a we have a, an issue that we have to address. This housing element says we acknowledge that that's a problem and we are going to deal with it by removing that prohibition in our multifamily housing districts. Um, this is going to be an issue we're going to, I mean, we're already, there's already folks in this town who are, you know, writing the state and saying, don't, don't approve this housing element. We want to save Measure A. I mean, there's already people raising money to sue the city if this housing element gets certified. So this is going to be a, a, a fight. It's going to be a fight. Um, if you don't approve the housing element, you're going to get sued by the advocates and most likely the state of California. If you do approve a housing element, you're probably gonna, the city's probably gonna get sued by the people who wanna preserve Measure A. Um, that's what's lining up. And that's that's sort of what's at stake um, it, on this, as for this next round. Um, but it's this, this, this question is gonna get resolved and it's gonna be resolved through this process and most likely through the courts. Finally, um, why not just do it all at Alameda Point? It plays back to this affirmatively, affirmatively furthering fair housing issue. The state has made it very clear, you can't just put all of your housing in the west end of Alameda. They create the maps, we don't create the maps, they create the maps. Their map shows where the low opportunity areas are and where the high opportunities areas. It's not surprising, East Alameda, Harbor Bay are high, extremely high opportunity areas. West Alameda, Alameda Point is the lowest opportunity areas. It's really a reflection of income, uh, home ownership, those kinds of things. You know, it's a problem for us here in Alameda, right? Like all the land is out here. There's very little land in East Alameda available for more housing. It's our, our, our 
inventory of land. It's all out here at West Alameda. So what this housing element does, it says, look, we're still gonna do a ton of our housing in West Alameda because that's where the land is. Um, we're talking 1,500 units of the 5,300 we have to do out here at Alameda Point. We think that's doable, but it's gonna be a huge challenge um, because at Alameda Point, we have the land, but we have no infrastructure. So we have to build all the infrastructure to support the housing as we're building the housing. And so that just takes a lot of time. So 1,500 housing units in eight years being built out here. I mean, we, what you see when you came in is about 500 housing units. I mean, it's taken us 20 years to get the first 500 years. Now we're up and running now. We got things moving, but 1,500 in eight years is going to be a massive challenge we think we can do it um, we think it's an appropriate amount also in terms of the fair housing issue um, but that's the, the primary reason why we don't put all the housing at Alameda Point um, where the, the I'll just wrap up just housing also about 1500 units at Alameda Point West End um, Alameda Landing some more housing up there Northern Waterfront, a uh, number of projects along the Northern Waterfront. Ensignal Terminals is good for 500 housing units. Um, the Boatworks Project, which is at Oak and Clement, that big vacant 10-acre parcel, another 182 units there. Um, Alameda Marina, which is under construction. It was a big, the new big building that's up, but there's, there's units that have already been approved and not built yet, so we get to take credit for that. So along the Northern Waterfront, um, a bunch of the units there. Up zoning of Park Street and Webster Street uh, to allow multifamily housing above ground floor retail. We're hoping around 400 units, 200 Webster Street, 200 Park Street. Things like converting, there's a, a, a few opportunity sites, not a lot. Um, and then, oh, shopping centers. Shopping centers, huge inventory of land there. So we have like five shopping centers. Um, they have you know, half of it is parking lot. Um, this is a lot of cities in America are doing this, like adding housing to the shopping centers because shopping centers are just not what they used to be and they represent a great opportunity to add housing. It actually helps the retail to have people living right right next to the retail. Um, so we think we can do about 800, no, um, 1,200 units between South Shore Shopping Center, Harbor Bay Shopping Center. And what's nice about those two shopping centers high opportunity areas for the state of California. So we're showing them, look, we're building some housing in the highest opportunity areas. Um, and then uh, Alameda Landing Shopping Center and um, Marina Village Shopping Center as well. Those are sort of the four big shopping centers where we think we can get about 1,200 housing units um, over this period. And then lastly, the residential neighborhoods. Let's just talk about them for just one minute. They're, they're by far the biggest reservoir of land we're talking 2,500 acres when you look at your R1, your R2. This is, these are the residential districts that most of you probably live in. Um, up until, since the adoption of Measure A in 1973, we stopped building housing on the, on the uh, Park Street and Webster Street. Like all the housing you see on Park Street and Webster Street above the ground floor retail, that was all built before 1973. Why is that? Well, because you adopted a land use regulation that's saying no more multifamily housing. So it has effectively killed that off. So in this day and age, it seems to make a ton of sense. That's where the transit is. That's where the shopping is. Let's build some housing above the retail on Parchment Webster Street. Um, residential neighborhoods. Since 1973, basically all new housing effectively stopped in the residential neighborhoods. Um, in 2018, the state said, hey, cities in California, you gotta loosen up your regulations on second units, on accessory dwelling units, the granny unit. You have to allow these things to happen um, with, with, under certain criteria. And so we passed those laws, just like every other city in, in, the, in, in California. And miraculously, we've, every year since then, we've seen a gradual uptick in the number of accessory dwelling units that um, 
Alameda residents have been building on their property. Now these are units that are being built where there's already a home. Most of them are in a garage or in a basement um, or in a backyard. So we don't really see them, but they are happening. Um, last year, about 70 of them were added. We issued building permits for 70. It's 2,400 acres. It's 16,000 properties. So 70 sort of sprinkled among the 16,000. You probably don't really notice it. What this housing element said, hey, we, we just loosen up that and make it possible for people to add housing in these districts. We think we can squeeze another 25 or 30 units out of per year out of the 16,000. So once again, from a fair housing perspective, sort of acknowledging like it's okay for different kinds of people to be living in all of our neighborhoods. We treat all of our neighborhoods equally. We're not trying to keep certain types of people out of certain types of neighborhoods. Um, we're trying to treat everyone the same. And that's the basic gist of, of, of our housing history. I've talked way too much. I think we have some questions. Let's do some, yeah, I'm going to have a drink and then you guys ask questions. Great, let's go. So what I do is I group them by subject matter, and that way I will read a few of the questions, and Andrew, then you can respond, okay. and then if there's any follow-up from there. So some people wrote their names on the questions, and some didn't, so I won't um, call, call out the name of the person, of the author of the question. So the very first question is, what is the legal citation for the law that requires a housing plan? So let me say this before I pass it over to uh, Andrew. Uh, I was on the first committee that created the arena appointed by the state of California. Um, I've been a plan director for a city, redevelopment agency, executive with the state of California. This is a law that, believe it or not, when Pete Wilson was an assembly person, passed in the state of California. It is now being enforced. So, to that section, there are approximately 150 um, amendments to the original general plan law of 1967. So I have all those. So if somebody wants to email me, I'll give you all the legal citations, but you should know that right now there are 150 plus. You have a number of case law. So that is not to evade the question, but the question is what is the legal citation? Is that a legal citation. There is a group of legal citations relative to the creation of this law, which began in 1967. Author was Pete Wilson, assemblyman from San Diego. So um, now for the arena, Andrew. Just um, what I neglected to say at the very beginning and back to the citation, um, this is the housing element. Um, the easiest way to get a hold of a copy or to read it, just Google Alameda 2040. Just go to Google, do that. It'll take you right to the city's general plan website, and that's where you'll find this document. And all those citations and the legal basis is right on page one. You'll find all that. And the Rena question was? Uh, how did it come to be? Oh. So the state has said, the state legislature, so your representatives at the, in Sacramento have determined that housing is an issue of statewide concern. An issue of statewide concern means this is so important to the state of California that every city needs to do its part to deal with it. The lack of housing, the lack of affordable housing in California is having negative effects on the lives of all Californians. Therefore, 
every city must step up to do its part. So, on the housing issue, what does the state require of the city to do? Number one, do the housing plan every eight years. What does that housing plan have to say? What the state does is they determine, because they the ones who decided it was an issue of statewide concern, what the, what, the, what, the, what the staff does in Sacramento is they determine how many housing units does the state need over the next eight years. And then they divide it by region. So Southern California, you need 50,000 or 500,000. The Bay Area for this eight years, it's 444,000 housing units in eight years. That's the need in California and the Bay Area. They do another, uh, the Sacramento has its region and there's, the states divide into regions. There's, an, uh, there's, an or, there's a regional planning group or, or agency for every region. Ours is called the Association of Bay Area Governments or ABAG. They have the god awful job of receiving the state's allocation for the Bay Area and then deciding how to divide it among the hundred cities and counties in the Bay Area. And they go through a two year process of establishing how do we do that, what's the formula for doing it. Um, and then they implement that formula and out comes the number for each city. Our city was 5,353. Um, now, one just other clarification. Cities don't build housing, right? We don't build housing. We do have a housing authority to build some housing, but 99% of the housing in California is built by property owners, developers, owners of land. The cities don't build housing. So that's, when you say you have to do a housing plan and what's the obligation of the city? Well, it's all about our zoning and our general plan. What do we allow and where do we allow it? Um, so, and that's what the state is asking us to do with the housing plan and with the arena. Oh, thank you. There are, are a few questions also related to Rena, but I want to get this one out of the way because this is an orphan and the person didn't sign it, so I want to make sure their question was answered. The question was, there does not seem to be a lot of housing on the Park Street corridor. Can there be more? And I know you addressed it earlier. The person that wrote this, do you, did you have your answer, your question answered? on the Park Street Corridor, yeah? Okay, all right, moving on. Okay, the next set of questions are everyone from 42% of the arena is for low and very low, 58% includes moderate income, you know, the various uh, statistics. You just go to arena site, you can see the methodology and the numbers, not only associated with Alameda, but as Andrew said, for the entire Bay Area, city by city and by county. They're all right there on one side. So this one is asking about 42% of the low, very low income, 58%. This one is, how was the 5,300 new unit figure derived? Who made this decision? Which is Arena. This is, given the extreme housing crisis in the Bay Area, how do we maximize the amount of affordable housing, which is a number issue. And then the second part to this, which is another stack there, which we'll get to, uh, deals with transit and leveraging uh, transit funds, um, oriented transit-oriented development, and the um, in an ingress and egress for the island. Um, and this is um, tied to that. Given those numbers, and there's a few of these questions, we're in a drought. So how does our infrastructure and our natural resources play into the amount of housing units that the state is asking to build? So that's a, a, a host of questions that I wanted to. Okay, I'm gonna try this. All right, um, let's go back to the arena. You know, the, that, I was talking about ABAG, what a god awful job. You don't wanna work for them. Um, <laughs> So you know, every city in the Bay Area has its traffic problems. When you say, well, what, you know, Alameda's got some unique environmental issues. I think the biggest is sea level rise, in my opinion. Um, but obviously earthquakes. Every, it seems like every city in the Bay Area has its environmental issues. We don't have the fire issue like the cities out, you know, Napa have in those areas. Um, essentially what the state and the region has said is like, look, this is an issue of statewide concern. 
Every single one of you cities has your own set of issues around transportation, infrastructure, fire hazards, sea level rise, the, the, the in, you know, water and all of you have these issues. That can't be the excuse for not building housing in California. We have to keep allowing people to build housing or else the repercussions for all Californians will be even worse. Um, Alameda, like transportation, let's just talk about that for a second. We have a transportation issue. I'm, I'm a planner. I work for the city of Alameda. Like I am the director of planning, building, and transportation. So it's kind of my problem that I'm got to work on. Like this, while I'm doing a housing element, I'm also doing transportation. Um, we have to work on our transportation system. One thing that is clear though, we have to stop this sort of chicken and egg conversation. Oh, well, we can't do housing and until we fix our transportation. Like, no more housing until we get the transportation system just perfect, so we all love it just like we like it, and then we'll allow it, then we'll, then we'll do some housing. That argument doesn't work. It doesn't work in California. It's not going to work. The state is saying, you've got a transportation problem, work on it, city. But in the meantime, you can't shut off your land, your supply of land for housing, because that is going to cause a whole other set of problems. What are we doing in Alameda about transportation? I actually think you're doing really well improving your transportation system. You added a new ferry terminal in the last two years. You added a new transit line across your whole city for transportation. Last two nights ago, we were at the council telling them about this new pilot program we're feeling pretty optimistic about, where we're going to set up a a free water shuttle between Oakland and Alameda for the northern waterfront, free to anybody who wants to use it, so that you don't have to drive through the Webster Posey tubes just to get to Jack London Square. I mean, it's only a thousand feet from here, but you can't get there without driving unless you want to brave that little tunnel path, which you, most people do once and never do it again. Um, the, um, but let's just get to it. We hear this all the time. No, but that's not the kind of transportation I'm looking for, Andrew. I need a new bridge for my car. I need to be able to drive my car. I don't ride bikes. I don't use transit. I want everyone else to do that, but I need to drive my car. I need a bridge for my car. That is not happening in the Bay Area. We, the Bay Area is growing. It's grown leaps and bounds over the last 20 years. We haven't widened the freeways. We built a whole new Bay Bridge. We didn't add a single lane. The, the, the state funding, the federal funding is not there to build more bridges. I've been working on this issue in Alameda for 20 years now. I've talked to Oakland about bridges. We've had these conversations. And I can tell you, no neighborhood in Oakland is interested in us building a bridge so that we can drive through their neighborhood to get to the freeway. And here's the other piece about it. No neighborhood in Alameda wants you to build that bridge in their neighborhood either. So. And even if we could get the neighborhoods in Oakland to say, yes, yes, build the bridge so you can all drive through our neighborhood and the, and the neighborhood in Alameda was like, yeah, 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 it's fine. You can all drive through our neighborhood. Um, we don't have the money in the state and the feds are not gonna fund it. The other thing is even if we did, you get into the freeway, like you're gonna be in a traffic jam the minute that bridge opens. It's not going to relieve that congestion because the freeway, which you're all trying to get to, the regional transportation is choking on the cars it already has. So it's not the solution to the problem. The solution to the problem is giving you options. That's what the city of Alameda is doing on transportation. You can still drive your car. You can still drive your car. You can do it for the next 20 years. It's not gonna be terribly convenient. If that's what you want, you're going to be able to do it. It's going to be slow. So what we are focusing on is give you another option. Like, the transit options are not great. We're trying to make them better. The connections to Oakland are not great. We're trying to make them better. Getting to San Francisco, 
is getting better with now you can take the ferry. Um, you know, we are talking to BART. Now, don't hold your breath on this because it's going to be it'll take a very long time. But ultimately, BART is needs to. That's me. Um, BART needs to do a second crossing. They want to go from uh, downtown Oakland to basically South San Francisco area. It, that tube is running right under Alameda, no matter what. We've told BART, we want an escalator going down to that tube. We don't want a big Walnut Creek style parking garage where everybody drives and dumps their car all day. But we would like a 19th Street or downtown Oakland style escalator so that we can get down and get on BART. You're all paying into the BART system. You should have a BART stop. Um, so, you know, we are trying. <laughs> we are. Yes, yeah. please. And, and, we, and as a city, we just have to keep working on these things. You know, BART, BART lines get built once in a lifetime. So we're trying to put Alameda and we've told them, like, we're in your way. Make it happen. We certainly don't want your BART line running over the above ground. It's got to be under. And please give us an escalator coming down. So we have a, an open uh, Alameda stop. But. Um, so it's really two problems. We have a housing problem. We have a transportation problem. We got to work on both. We have to work on them both simultaneously. Every single new project in Alameda pays money every year to provide funding for supplemental service. That's how. It, that's the money that's funding that water shuttle. Every single person who moves into a new housing project in Alameda and out here gets an, easy, an AC Transit Easy Pass. The concept is this: like. You know what, you may never use it. It may just sit in your wallet, but Jesus, you know, let's make it as easy as possible for people to like, all right, hey, I got this thing. Let me just jump on AC Transit instead of driving. Sorry. Thank you. Got off track. <laughs> no. We want a bark shop. Yes. That's the takeaway. Okay. Um, we have a host of questions that once again are extremely similar. One, so I'll just give them to you in rapid order and you can address them. One, given the number of units, we have about six questions for you. How does that impact Alameda schools? Do we, will we need to build more schools? Okay. Um, two, how is the city, once again, tied to infrastructure and schools? Another one, do ADU units count as additional housing units given our lot size? So that's that's also. Awesome. Uh, yes, on the ADUs. You know those 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 changes we made in 2018. I was telling you about. Like we used to do no ADUs, like one every five years. Now we're doing about 50 since 2018, about 50 to 60 a year. So what we're telling the state is, hey, no reason to think that's going to stop. So give us credit, 60 a year for the next eight years. So yeah, absolutely, that's a piece of our housing element, and we count them. Um, schools. So the city and the school district, we, we talk to each other. They do what's called a school impact fee. They, 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 they talk to the city. They look at the development projections going out 10 years. They determine, well, if all that housing gets built, that's gonna be more students. They, the school district determines what kind of additional facilities will be needed given that new housing, what the fair share cost